What's up my people? Welcome back to the channel. Leave a like on this video I'm asking you please and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. So as usually, I have some things I'm going to share with you guys and we're going to get into the first thing people and it's an update on the case against Beachy Stout, right? You know, I give you a regular update on this. See? So this is the latest update when we see. So I'm going to share it with you guys, right? Beachy Stout was furious wife took cop into bedroom, says witness. Boy, I'm not like people. You see that wife yeah? She presumptuous, bad. I'm not lie. Two jurors fell ill Thursday, causing an early adjournment of the MURDER trial of Portland businessman Everton Beachy Stout, McDonald, and his co accused Oscar Barnes in the Home Circuit Court downtown Kingston. McDonald and Barnes are on trial for the July 20, 2020 MURDER of Tonya McDonald, Beachy Stout's second wife, her partially born body was found slum beside her raised motor vehicle on the Sherwood Forest Main Road in Portland with her throat S L A S H E D. So her throat was C U T, right? The first witness who took the stand on Monday is expected to continue his testimony on Monday when the trial is set to resume. So the same person will start testifying Monday gone. At the same person, I got to take back the stand Monday coming, right? During Wednesday's sitting, the witness testified that Tonya had remained silent when McDonald confronted her in his office about her bringing her so-called lover into his bedroom. It is alleged that the individual was a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The witness, a former employee of Beachy Stout who played many roles, said he was present in the office at the supermarket owned by the businessman in Portland when he heard him telling his wife that she need to delete her Facebook account. He said to her, you need to get rid of your Facebook page and delete the account because it will bring too much disgrace for me. He said the boy have her up every week and all a put up picture and the boy have the mind to train him he asked her how the boy got pictures of his bedroom if she didn't carry him into the house for him to be posting it on facebook the witness told the court he said that bg stout in the conversation with his wife said a them careless life here yeah, you want for people to walk and disgrace my name i told you to get rid of that friend of yours and you keep calling her he added that mcdonald told his wife to change her phone number but while he was speaking she sat down quietly and continued doing her work the witness went on to detail for the court his recollection of events surrounding mcdonald's alleged plot to do estonia and her police boyfriend with acid according to the witness the plan was to badly disfigure their faces he claimed that sometime in 2020 while at the business place in portland he saw a beachy stout with what appeared to be a jug and he was pouring out some liquid substance into a cork he was sitting at his desk and he said throw this on my hand I was afraid to throw it on his hand because I knew it was acid. In the same week, he sent me to go buy some containers. He said to buy a container with a metal cover similar to the jam bottle. He said to get the metal cork because this is acid and will melt any ordinary cork. According to the witness, Beachy Stout said, this is to deal with the police boy because Tonya carried his name to the police and he said it was a good thing he had somebody there to tell him. He said he can S-H-O-O-T him again so this I go deal with his face make the two of them go live together. The witness began to cry in court when he remembered that the plan included disfiguring Tonya's face and skin. Him say, him ago burn her up so 
she and the policeman can stay with each other. I said, Mr. Mack, just give her the ten million dollar and don't know. Both of them were arguing, the witness said, pointing out that it was then he overheard bits and pieces of a conversation in relation to somebody wanting $10 million. The witness said his former boss was becoming highly suspicious of Tonya being involved in extramarital relationship. He added that due to this suspicion, Beachy thought would get him to help him spy on his wife on numerous occasions. In the first to the second week of July in 2020, Mr. McDonald was supposed to come from Kingston, but she didn't come, or Mistress McDonald was supposed to come from Kingston, but she didn't come back at the time when he expected her to come back. I was in the shop and he said, I must go and see if I see her. I took Tonya's father's car and drove all the way to Junction St. Mary and the way he called me and said, to come back because she was at her mother he went back to the shop one early morning in the same july month in 2020 she went to kingston and he came downstairs from his office and said if i knew any taxi man who could carry me to kingston as he wanted to find out where tonya went i told him that i knew a taxi man and he told me to go and look for him I went down the street and had a conversation and I went back to Mr. Mack and told him that the taxi man was out of town. He didn't say anything else. He just went upstairs, the witness claimed. Mr. Mack said he noticed that when she left in the mornings, she didn't come back until night. He wanted to know what was holding her until night. After he and I spoke, he said he knew what he was going to do. He said he was going to call some boys and make them follow her. The witness told the court. Boy, people, as me say, the marriage there was very, very toxic. And this man knew what the woman I do. And him still don't want to let go. Obviously, him love her. You know what I mean? And this girl, yeah. Me not lie, she did bright with what she had do. You understand? Because if you have a care man going to your bedroom where you and your husband sleep at night time, that way past the boundary. You know what I mean? So I want to leave in the comment section on your thoughts, right? And like up, like up the video, people. Please and thanks. Please and thanks. Just like up the video. So we are going to move on, people right so i look a robbery one in a manchester no robbery a temp robbery and a security guard get caught up you know what i mean so i'm gonna read the first article where them publish and i'm gonna read the update also seeing so security carrier attack in manchester police have confirmed that a vehicle belonging to a money carrier company was attacked by GUN men in New Forest, Manchester on Thursday evening. Preliminary reports are that the robbery attempt was filed and confirmed reports suggest that a security guard was SHOT during the incident. <coughs> this latest incident follows the August 25th armed robbery in Mandeville which left five people injured when GUN men attacked a beryllium crew making off with millions of dollars, the total amount stolen is yet to be disclosed. See, so that are the initial article where them publish, right? And people, a whole heap of money, them people are going to claim from the insurance you know, because I'll know them not really know the exact figure of money that has been taken in the robbery in August, right? So all them have to go do. I just put one big figure, you know what I mean, for insurance, pay back everything, right? So these are the update people. Update, right? Security guard, SHOT, and injured in Manchester attempt robbery. 
A 57-year-old security guard was SHOT and injured during an attack on an Atlas security team in New Forest, Manchester on Thursday evening. A police report said about 6.14 p.m. the man and another security guard were collecting money from businesses business places in New Forest when they were attacked by GUN men in a black motor car as they left a supermarket. The 57-year-old guard sustained a GUN SHOT wound to the head. A senior police source said the guard was grazed by the can. The police said no cash was stolen and the GUN men made their escape. Uh... The injured man was taken to hospital by his colleague. He, was, he has been admitted for treatment. Late Thursday, detectives processed the scene along the New Forest Main Road. The latest incident followed the August 25th armed robbery in Mandeville, which left five people injured, a beryllium crew of millions. Ray, ray, ray. Seen? So, missing one article. We said the person that got can was a man. I me see a next article. We say the person that got can was a female. You understand? So me don't know which one of them to believe, you know. But if me for choose, Moda says a man. Cause me not think them are gonna put a female on a job like that. Right? So we are gonna move on, people. Man in custody following seizure of firearm and ammunition in St. Thomas. So our day before yesterday them go St. Thomas go pick up some lottery scammers. So them go back, they go make a raid again. One man is in custody following a raid that led to the seizure of a firearm and ammunition in Jane Ashkana, Duck, Duckinfield, District St. Thomas, on Friday morning. Deputy Superintendent of Police O'Neill Thompson, Operations Officer for the parish, said the raid was carried out minutes to 6 a.m. Reports are that 1.45 semi-automatic pistol was recovered the firearm was fitted with a magazine containing 6.45 cartridges a further search of the dwelling saw the recovery of two 12 gauge cartridges the man's identity is being withheld pending further investigation so leave your comment on that people and like up the video please and thanks that's all my ask you so people me see this thing here where a student get beat up the worst way just for step on the next youth shoes. You see me? I say just for step on the next youth. Them say it's a clerks the youth did have on. You see me? I say and this sad. I'll do a long time them something me are going in a people. Man lose them three points already just for step on man's shoes. You know what I mean? And some man cherish them shoes in a worse are the one pair them have you know especially if it is a clocks you know you see me i say some man clocks are the only shoes missy man walk with brushing at them pocket and click yo so me i go share the story people student hospitalized after alleged stepping on schoolmate clocks a eighth grade student of bb cook high school has been hospitalized after he was beaten for allegedly stepping on an 11th grade, 11th grade student clerk's shoe at the Junction Base Institution in St. Elizabeth on Thursday. Preliminary reports are that shortly after the dismissal of classes, the two boys were among students collecting their phones when the older boy accused the younger boy of stepping on his clerk's shoes. The grade 11 student allegedly assaulted the grade 8 student by punching and beating him and his hand and face. The eighth grade student was taken to hospital for treatment. A video of the incident has gone viral on social media. So me see a video with the aunt of the eighth grade student. You know what I mean? I speak out about what happened. You see me? The, the auntie say, are the youth friend them of help him and bring him Go hospital. You see me I say, and people, come on. Somebody step on your shoes, Bridging. If them tell you sorry, you just accept the sorry and brush off the shoes yourself and move on. And me can bet you it was a crowded area. 
because of them phone them are collect so it look like say them put them phone up when them come at school and when them leave them give them back them phone so it look like see a couple student well they they collect them phone and this youth he accused the next youth of stepping on his shoes you know what i mean and do the youth that judge boy may i tell her people so we are going to move on people to lay on isa because the judge ruled upon our case for the password for our phone whether she forgive the police them or not so make we get into it people Leon Issa ordered to give police access to phone by 4 o'clock today. Amai Leon Issa, the mother of 9-year-old Gabriel King, has been ordered by the Supreme Court to give investigators access to her cellular phone by 4 p.m. on Friday. The court had dismissed a claim put forward by Leon Issa as she sought to stop a production order for the phone. She had argued that allowing investigators to search the phone by way of the production order would be a breach of her right to privacy. However, today's ruling said for the investigation into her son's MURDER, the benefits gained from granting the production order far, far outweigh the breach of privacy of the claimant. Gabriel was MURDER along Tucker Main Road in st james on january 13 2022 but leon isa had repeatedly failed to allow police investigators to search her cell phone after they indicated a desire to analyze information on the device as part of their investigation into the k-i-l-l-i-n-g of her artistic son after he was m-u-r-d-e-r when she a uh, report to the police that her car had been hijacked with the child inside the saint james parish court had ruled that she must comply with the request for her cell phone's password in order to combat this a constitutional hearing to decide whether or not the production order granted to investigators in 2020 to search her cell phone is a breach of her right to privacy was held in july so people as the judge say you know what i mean the investigation outweigh the her privacy you see me i say because this is her son whatever she have upon the phone you know what i mean they must go see it because the investigation must go on and she should I give them the password if she not have nothing to do with her son three points getting tech you know what i mean car people are speculating i say no man it look like say you have something to do with your son getting you know what i mean him three points taken because you know one give up the the the, the password for your phone so right now she have to go do it people are uh, them are gonna lock her away so we are gonna wait and see what go on you know what i mean so here what me i know me not gonna put out this just yet me i gonna wait until look a bit after four and then me put it out so if the information come in about whether she give them or not me give on an update you know what i mean or maybe me put out this and give on an update you know what i mean same way so like and subscribe people see so we are gonna move on right so tupac get him three points take years ago right from 96 so that are how much years 96 to 2023 that about that are 27 years ago him get him three points take and them arrest a man people so me i go share the news with you know man tied to suspected s-h-o-o-t-e-r in tupac shakur's 1996 k-i-l-l-i-n-g arrested in las vegas sources say so it look like see another man will do the actual damage ah uh, him associate them all on right 
Las Vegas police arrested a man in the DEADLY 1996 drive by Carnin of Tupac Shakur along a weighted break in a case that has frustrated investigators and, for, and fascinated the public ever since the hip hop icon was GUN down on the Las Vegas trip 27 years ago. Dwayne Kef D. Davis was arrested early Friday morning, although the exact charge or charges were not immediately clear. According to two officials with first hand knowledge of the arrest, they were not authorized to speak publicly ahead of an expected indictment later Friday. Davis was al Davis has along been known to investigators and as himself admit in interviews and in his 2019 tell all memoir Compton Street legend that he was in the Cadillac where the GUN fired Europe during the September 1996 drive by Carnin. Shakira was 25 when he was GUN down. The arrest comes two months after Las Vegas police raided his wife's home July 17 in neighboring Henderson. Documents said police were looking for items concerning the M-U-R-D-E-R -E of Tupac Shakur. Police reported um, collecting multiple computers, a cell phone, an hard drive, a Vibe magazine that featured Shakur, several for, um, 40 caliber can, two tubs containing photographs, and a copy of Davis' 2019 tell-all memoir, Compton Street, Compton Street Legend. In the book, Davis said he broke his silence over Tupac's K-I-L-L-I-N-G in 2010 during a closed-door meeting with federal and local authorities. At the time, he was 46 and facing life in prison and drug charges when he agreed to speak with the authorities. They promised they would sh um, shred the indictment and stop the grand jury if I helped them out, he wrote. He has described himself as one of the last living witness to the conning. Shakir was 25 when he was GUN down in a drive-by conning near Las Vegas Strip on the night of September 7, 1996. The rapper was in a BMW driven by um, Death Row Record founder Marian Shugnight in a convoy of about 10 cars. They were waiting at a red light when a white Cadillac pulled up next to them and GUN fire erupt. Shakur was SHOT multiple times and him drop out a week later. In 2018, after a cancer diagnosis, Davis admitted publicly in an interview for a BET show to being inside a Cadillac during the attack. He implicated his nephew, Arlanda Baby Lane Anderson, saying he was one of the two people in the back seat where the can were fired. The conning happened shortly after casino brawl earlier in the evening involving Anderson, Shakur and others. Anderson dropped out um sorry, Anderson denied any involvement in Shakur conning. He dropped out two years later in a conning in Compton, California. Shakur's D E A T H came as his fourth solo album all eyes on me remain on the charts with some five million copies sold nominated six times for a grammy award shakur is largely considered one of the most influential and influential and versatile rapper of all time shakur was feuding at the time with rap rival biggie small also known as notorious big who was fatally con in march 1997 at the time both rappers were in the middle of an east coast west coast rivalry that um, primarily defined the hip-hop scene during the mid 1990s craig Caden, a retired los angeles uh, police detective 
who spent years investigating Shakir K-I-L-I-N-G and wrote a book about it, said he would not be surprised by Davis' indictment and arrest. It's so long overdue, Caden told the Associate Press during a recent interview. People have been yearning for him to be arrested for a long time. It's never been unsolved. Our minds, it's, um, it's never been unsolved in our mind. It's been unprosecuted. Caden said he interviewed Davis in 2008 and 2009 during Los Angeles police investigation of the K-I-L-L-I-N-G of Shakur in Las Vegas and the slaying of Biggie Small. Caden said also that he talked with a Las Vegas police detective about the case including after the SWAT raid in July at the home in Anderson. The former Los Angeles police detective said he believed the investigation gained new momentum in recent years following Davis' public description of his role in the K-I-L-L-I-N-G, including his 2019 tell-all memoir, Compton Street Legend. It's those events that have given Las Vegas the momentum and the leverage to move forward, Caden said. Prior to Keith D's public declaration, the case were unprosecutable as they stood. He put himself squarely in the middle of the conspiracy, Caden said of Davis and Shakur slain. He had acquired the GUN, he had given the GUN to the SHOTER, and he had been present in the vehicle when they hunted down and located both Tupac and Shug Knight. Kade noted that Davis is the last living person among the four people who were in the vehicle from which SHOTS were fired at Shakur and rapper Marian Shugnight. Others were Davis' nephew, Arlando Baby Lane Anderson, Terence Bubblelop Brown, and Andre Freaky Smith. It's a concerted effort of conspirators, Caden said, adding that he believed that because the K-I-L-L-I-N-G was premeditated, Davis could face a first-degree M-U-R-D-E-R charge. All the other direct conspirators are participants are all D-E-A-D. Caden said, Keith D is the last man standing among the individuals that conspire to K-I-L-L Tupac. So people after 27 years, them all lamp and one of the man them were plan up for dash with Tupac. Right? Me see an interview with that same person, you know, and he my talk say I'm nephew, dirt Tupac. Some vibes with him nephew. I guess I'm nephew. Tupac did beat up in the casino and the nephew go for your machine and them drive around till them find Tupac and can up Tupac, right? Him say I'm nephew. Never did a no bad man like that. You know what I mean? But because him disrespect him nephew, he in the casino like that, him nephew say yo, him affi there Tupac. Right? So, him go lab off him out, you know, and see them all lamp on him. So, him get where him deserve. You know what I mean? And him go chat, say this and that. Him a look hype. He look like a that. Him a look hype. So, him get where the duck get. Right? Him a bow, them say him did a 46 in about 2019, I think. So, no, him about 50 had, right? Him about 50. See? So, hey, him spread him bed, him a fill you in it. So, we are going to move on, people. Pim Pim charged for allegedly S-H-O-O-T, man in St. Elizabeth. A 40-year-old farmer has been charged for allegedly pulling a machine and S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G a man in Degal Vineyard, St. Elizabeth, on September 23, charged with wounding with intent possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition is our Joel Williams, otherwise called Pimpim, of Mangawag Vineyard District in the parish. Reports from the police are that a man was at a business establishment in the area when a blue motorcycle with two men aboard drove up. Williams, who was the pillar and disembarked with a machine in hand, and the man ran. 
he opened G-U-N-F-I-R-E in the man's direction before he and his accomplice escaped from the area. After the canning subsided, the man discovered that he had been canned and was taken to hospital where he was treated. He later reported the matter to the police and an investigation was launched. William turned himself into the police on Tuesday, September 26th and was subsequently charged. So, why people? You man them live like a cowboy show. No star. Why? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So we are going to move on, people. St. James Police hunting colleagues, K-I-L-L-E-R-S. Right? The St. James Police say they will not relent until they find the K-I-L-L-E-R-S of one of their former colleagues, retired constable Patrick A and three other men. A, who retired in January after serving in the Jamaica Constabulary Force for over 30 years, dropped out Wednesday night after being hit by a stray can in Tucker, St. James, during the afternoon. Two other men, Glenwar Morgan, also known as Crow, a 27-year-old laborer of Tucker District, and Neville, Neville Dixon, Neville Dixon, a 73-year-old retired of Rosemount Gardens, were also KILL in the incident. It's reported that Morgan and Dixon were on a truck along the roadway when a Toyota Voxy motor car drove up and the occupants of the vehicle open can K-I-L-L-I-N-G them on the spot. One of the can from their G-U-N-S caught here who was close by the men then speed off. Acting commanding officer for the St. James Aaron Samuels said his former colleague did not get a chance to enjoy his retirement. He was 60 years old. He was a very jovial person. A lot of police officers have many good things to say about him. He will really be missed. We are really saddened by what transpired and we are appealing for persons who have information to really come forward and give that information to the police so we can bring the perpetrators of this crime to justice, Samuel told our news team. There is a curfew in place within the area and he said the police will be doing their operational activities with the aim of finding the criminals. So we are requesting and asking for anybody with information to come forward, Samuel said. The police are also probing the MURDER of 25-year-old Orlando O'Neill Mannings, a technician of Norwood Gardens Boulevard, Montego Bay, whose bar they was found in bushes along the Queens Drive main road in Flanker St. James on Tuesday morning. Manning at G-U-N-S-H-O-T wounds to the head. The police theorized that he was K-I-L-L between 6.30 p.m. on Monday and 7.30 a.m. Tuesday. See, so people, me I go put up the police man picture upon the thumbnail. He's a fat brother. You know what I mean? So... R.I.P. to him, boy people more the same, but lucky, you know what I mean, him died the wrong place at the wrong time. A January man retire from the police force and fi enjoy him look retirement. You see me I say? And a stray just catch him. Boy, I tell you, R.I.P. to him still, you know what I mean, and condolences to the family. So people... On the hear about a story uh, about a man we forward from the States, a white man, and him friend up some people in a St. James and end up walk off the people them twelve year old daughter. See him say I think him say are the father give him the daughter. You know what I mean? So them find him guilty from what he had. and when them bring him go court for sentence him the man go on with one piece of sitting in at the court I say boy this a racism and 
him try him best for them tell him say yo go on home my yard you know what i mean but them just remind him after them remind him them set a court date for today so him just get sentenced not too long you know what i mean i mean if i go read the article or anything me just i go tell you know how much years him get so him get 17 years people you know what i mean i me feel him should i get more than that you know what i mean but justice was served anyway you see me the little girl must traumatize and the father him need to get sentenced too me don't know if them have him a court or anything like that but if the father set it up for go on father forget send with too so people i need an update before me leave the youth will beat up the next youth at bb Cook high school in a saint elizabeth right now i'm in a police custody but i don't think he might go stay long still they might go give him a station bill because you don't know a school boy they not go keep him too light bill and him get bail you see me so they might go have him a court i don't feel like they might go give him a sentence i feel like they might go just charge him some money you know what i mean so let me know what you guys think in the comment section leave a like people and subscribe to the channel after you subscribe click the top bell icon so you can get notified when anything new is on the channel see so i give you now update as soon as we get some information about if the mother hand over the password to the police so bless upon yourself and thanks for watching